It's Gian alum at Convincing Crypto, where we keep you in the loop on all the latest trends and news on crypto and blockchain technology. Today, we have a very special guest on our show. We've got Stephen Ward, the CEO of ViFi. Do you want to wave to the camera? You can, Steve. Hi, I just unblurred my background because I don't, I prefer the brick to the blur. <laughs> we both got brick in the background. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, as always, please be aware of any scams out there. If you see any scams on YouTube, please report those. And this video is not an endorsement of any project on Cardano in any way. So please do your own research before investing in anything here. But let's dive into this. I'm so glad. Thanks today. For yeah. Thank you, Steve, for Thanks. zooming in all the way from Australia. I know it's late there, right? What time is it over there? Yeah, 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, thank you. Some bags under the eyes. But forget about those. <laughs> all right. We'll try to make. Make sure this isn't way too long, but I'm super appreciative yeah, that you're here right. to talk to our audience today. So yeah, I'm here. I want to know your story. How did you get into the blockchain space? How was ViFi born? And did you have any skepticism potentially when you first got into blockchain? So let's start with my path into blockchain. So okay. I had a bit of a classic, I don't know if it was a classic path, but a pretty of a standard path. My background is, my study background is physics. I did mathematics. I'm as part of that, of course. Uh, from there, I moved into quantitative analytics within the trading space. So I worked at a hedge fund, I worked at a stock brokerage, and I worked within a bank. So I kind of did the rounds over seven years within the financial sector. Um, little piece of advice, always move upwards and onwards, never stay at one place. You'll always get paid more if you move. Mm -hmm. um, now... After uh, those years within the financial sector, I kind of started trading crypto in 2016, uh, maybe late 2015. I did the whole boom and bust in the 2017 um, cycle. Mm -hmm. From there, I started engaging with DeFi sort of very early on, um, sort of late 2018, uh, early 2019 when Uniswap was first released. And they were also doing some early DeFi on Tron. Um Within that, I realized, so my background as a trader is within bonds. Okay. And the specialty that I had was interest rate swaps specifically. And the setup of an interest rate swap is really simple. It's just I swap my currency for another currency so I can access a higher interest rate. So the setup is essentially one currency, a second currency, and then I swap them for an interest rate. Now, when you have a liquidity pool in DeFi, you basically have one currency and another currency, and then you swap half of the one currency for the other one in return for an interest rate. Mm -hmm. So basically, the mathematical setup of liquidity pool and liquidity mining is the exact same mathematical setup as interest rate swaps. Well, not exactly the same, but like, you know, that far apart. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I came to it like a duck to water, really. Like, I really came naturally to me. And from working within the... DeFi space, I sort of made that my full-time job was just trading in DeFi. Mm -hmm. And from there, I started seeing a few things that I wanted to change or adjust or improve within the DEX space. So I came up with my own concept for a DEX on Cardano, uh, that's ViFi, and I released it <laughs> with my team. It's definitely not a solo effort. We've got a lot of people working in the background uh -huh. to make it real. <laughs> And how did you find your team in all of this? How did you, did you meet them in person? Did you just find them on different, in conferences or chat boards or... Everyone always yeah. has a story of how they met the people and how they found trust in those people that they work with. Yeah, look, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mix, right? It's a little bit, it started as a bit of a family task, like a family endeavor. Huh. So I came up with the idea. I got my, actually it wasn't initially, initially family, but I came up with the idea. I got a colleague of mine at my work at the time, uh, pre-sold on it. So he left work with me to pursue this. Um, from there I found my next investor who then became an employee with us, uh, was an old friend of mine who had just left his job working in stocks and had a little bit of money and was like, I don't know what to do now with my life. And I'm like, well, look, I got something <laughs> you can do. <laughs> um, and from there we basically, I brought in my stepbrother, um, and my, my stepbrother as a business manager and my stepfather as an accountant as he is an accountant by trade and then from there it became that was the australian side pretty much all covered and then from there i went searching internationally for the skills that i needed right so um from there we found developers in america south america um pro not croatia bosnia herzegovina god get that right um 
and from across uh, from across Europe as well. And these sort of all came through, yeah, as you listed a few of them, you know, conferences, through meeting people within the space and engaging with communities, you get to know people, their skills and what they're interested in doing. Um, and then as you develop your knowledge of the people in the space, you can sort of start to work with those people and lean on them to bring them on board. Now, at the moment, we have a team of 11. Mm -hmm. um, and that, yeah, so that's 11 full time. So, you know, that's not, that's still a small business, but it's definitely we're doing stuff. Definitely, definitely. So I want to know, can you just explain what is Wi-Fi? How does it work? What are its use cases? I like to describe Wi-Fi as a uniquely Cardano DEX mm -hmm. uh, in that we've taken the Cardano blockchain technology and implemented it in such a way that we can perform functions that can't really be performed on any other blockchain. And um, there's a few examples of this. So one of the first big differences between us and other DEXs is that we've got an inbuilt distributive mechanism. This is called our bar. So how this works is it basically collects the fees from all the transactions that take place on our DEX, and it automatically uses those fees to buy back Wi-Fi from the market. So this distributive mechanism is built into the smart contract of every swap on our DEX um, and is certainly something that is very unique uh, to us within the Cardano space. Um, users can engage with it very easily just by going to our DEX and depositing Wi-Fi into the bar, and they'll be automatically distributed a portion of all the fees that are generated. Um, the next big one that we have is stakeless LP farming. So the general process that a user goes through when providing liquidity to a DEX is normally a three-step process. And this design is really, uh, I would say, a legacy from an account-based blockchain, right? Where users supply liquidity, they, sorry, first you have a token, let's say Cardano. You swap half of that Cardano out for another token. So now you have two tokens. You then match those two tokens. That's one transaction. Mm -hmm. You match those two tokens to create an LP token. That's two transactions. You receive the LP token. You deposit that LP token into a farm. That's three transactions. Almost put up four. So <laughs> when, um, when we're dealing with this process, that's a three transaction process. But with the EUTXO model, you know, the Cardano blockchain, we can very easily implement stakeless LP farming. So that means that your LPs don't actually need to provide, don't actually need to go anywhere to earn the farm. So yeah. as a result of this, we're able to essentially allow users to provide liquidity. If they've already got both tokens, instead of a two-step process, it's a one-step process because you supply both tokens, the LP hits your wallet and you instantly start farming. The next advantage this provides for the user, of course, is that all of your tokens Oh, sorry, all of your farms are going to be harvested simultaneously by default. So there's no mucking around and harvesting 13 different farms. It's all going through at once. The next one, this is what I'm most excited for, is that this system actually unlocks the liquidity that's held within those LP tokens. Hmm. Because those LP tokens at the moment are thought of as almost throwaway tokens, right? Like I get them in my wallet and then I put them straight into a farm and then I forget about them and I'm just yeah, harvesting this farm. <laughs> They're just sitting there, exactly, right? But those LP tokens, if you think of them from a traditional finance perspective and even just from a you know logical perspective, they're representative of real underlaying assets, the two tokens mm -hmm. that they're made up of. Now, those underlaying assets, when they're merged into an LP, actually make that LP a derivative of the underlaying tokens. And what's most important here is that a lot of people don't understand impermanence risk, and I'm not going to go into a big diatribe on impermanence risk and how it works here. But what is really important to understand about impermanence risk is that the price risk that you hold on an LP, i.e. by being in the liquidity pool, is half the price risk that you hold by having a token outright. And we can think about this really like conceptually from a portfolio perspective. It's very simple. If I have, let's say, 1,000 Cardano of a token, and I'm holding 1,000 Cardano of that token, that token drops by half. Now that's 500 Cardano in value, right? Easy. Um, now, if I'm in a liquidity pool, instead of 1,000 Cardano, I sell half of that. So now I've got 500 Cardano and 500 Cardano with a token. You can just see from that structure that implicitly, if that drops by half, because I've got the 500 Cardano sitting there and only 500 Cardano of the other one, I'm not going to lose a net value of 500 Cardano. 
fact, the impermanence risk reduces it by 50%. You'll be at a total value of about 750 Cardano at the end of a move of that token dropping by 50%. So not only are LPs a derivative structure of the two tokens, but they're actually a derivative structure that contain less risk than the underlying token itself. Huh. So, and also I should add, what makes them really exciting on BiFi as well is that they're also an interest-bearing asset because the LP mm-hmm. itself earns far, right? So now we've essentially taken a token and turned it into a format where now you have it with 50% of the risk and it's an interest-bearing asset. This token is no longer just sitting there and useless to you. We can start designing processes where we can implement this token to utilize that value. So an example that we've utilized in our own decks is L2LPs or layer two liquidity pools. So that's where users are able to add their layer one liquidity or their LPs into a liquidity pool itself. So by putting those LPs into a liquidity pool itself, they've now readjusted their portfolio structure again. You started with 50-50 from the LP, but now you've added 50% in Cardano again. So your risk structure is now 25% underlaying token. 75% Cardano, which means you've only got half of the price risk again. And this can be um, sort of akin to what we have in the Ethereum ecosystem, or I believe believe they do multi-chain on Balancer, actually. But this is very similar to a Balancer 80-20 pool. So Balancer have 80-20 pools, which is 20% one token, 80% another token. And the risk ratio is is accordingly 20-80, right? RL2LPs are 75-25. Right, so the risk ratio is seventy five twenty five, very similar to a balance already twenty four, and this again is a very unique one product in Cardano, but also a very unique process to achieve this product. Right, we are, we're not achieving this product by creating a pool that you supply tokens to, but we're achieving this risk ratio by actually implementing your existing assets in a way that we can boost the value each step of the way. In other words, if you engage with an L2 LP, we can give you more farm than if you've just got an L1 LP, right? So now we've been able to boost the value while reducing the risk. So these are all really unique structures that we're able to build purely because of Cardano's technology, right? Which is why I call ourselves a very uniquely Cardano Dex. Sorry, I had went on a long talk. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think when um, people are choosing a DEX too, they're just wondering like, okay, like why, why this one? What makes it unique to like what I need? And if they're, they are a Cardano user, that makes a lot more sense that they want like less losses, less risks mm-hmm. there. That's it. It reduces, we've got tools that allow you to reduce your risk and reduce your loss. And it allows you to create more bespoke risk profiles based on tokens that you want to invest in. Um, I do have another question for you. I ask this every single time to basically every founder of a project. I want to know, what is the first word that you want people to think when they think BiFi and why? Just one word. Um, Probably innovation. innovation. And the reason being is because we're continuously trying to implement the Cardano blockchain and the technology that we're working on in new and exciting ways to build new products. Nice, nice. Yeah, and it's an ever-changing landscape. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, And actually, just very quickly, within mm-hmm. that vein, We've got a new product that we're launching very soon, uh, which again is something that we could only build because of Cardano. It's called the transaction cart. And it works very similarly to a Amazon shopping cart, but okay. for transactions on our DEX, right? So at the moment when you're running transactions on DEXs, there's always a backlog in that you can only spend one UTXO on a wallet per at a time. So that means that if I conduct a transaction and then I'm trying to do another transaction with t- tokens in the same UTXO, the transaction is going to fail until the UTXO goes through or the last transaction goes through. And I'm sure we've all had this experience on Cardano. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we've built is essentially a transaction card that allows you to stack multiple transactions in one go on our decks so that you can run them all simultaneously. And this means that you can perform transactions such as, let's say, remove liquidity from 10 pools, swap out 10 tokens, and then um, re-add liquidity to 10 different uh, pools and you could run all of these, all those 30 transactions in just three because you nice. could run all of those 10 add liquidities, all of those 10 remove liquidities, all of those 10 swaps all at once in one single go. All through that one um, shopping cart, essentially. Exactly, all through that one shopping cart. 
So this is something that we're super excited for and we're hoping we'll be launched by the end of next week, maybe early wow. week after. So this is coming out very soon and we're really excited for people to start playing around with it. Congrats, congrats. It's coming up. Thanks. I want yeah. to know a little bit more um, about your Wi-Fi token. Mm-hmm. What are its use cases? Uh, what are the benefits for people who have that token? Mm-hmm. So at the moment, we have a, well, a few use cases. I mean, you've always got the classic governance. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have our bar. So our bar is the distributive mechanism and users are able to engage with the distributive mechanism um, by depositing their Wi-Fi at the bar. And then they'll be able to earn a, a proportion of the fees that are generated by the platform. Then we have our uh, liquidity pools, of course, farming across our entire decks and across pretty much every decks on Cardano. I'm pretty sure there's a farm for Wi-Fi, except for maybe Teddy Swap and Spectrum. Um, then we've also got some cross-chain capabilities. So we've got a few farms on Nilcometer. And of course, uh, you can use us to buy, well, we work with a lot of launching projects, particularly NFT projects. Hmm. Uh, so most recently, you were able to, you're able to use us to buy a, uh, what are they called? Diamond hoops. Uh, you're able to use us to buy their NFTs. We have a lottery that's implemented that you can partake in. So you can also use uh, Wi-Fi to buy lottery tickets. Um, and I should say the one that I'm really excited for, and this is probably a whole nother conversation in itself. Uh, we're launching a new product. Um, called T minus one, and that's a launch pad that's coming out in the beginning of April. Um, we've already announced Sengate Global as the first partner that we were launching with, and they're launching their Palm token through T minus one, yeah, with in April. So we're really excited for this launch, and there's going to be um, use cases for Wi-Fi built into that launch pad as well as it's you know our launch pad. So um, that'll be things such as whitelisting and the capacity to buy sort of upcoming tokens. Um, through utilizing that Wi-Fi. And the last one, oh, and I also forgot vaults. Um, you can also earn a few other tokens by staking your Wi-Fi. So stake Wi-Fi into vaults, and we've got vaults for Drip, we've got vaults for Kofi, we've got vaults for, well, Wi-Fi for Wi-Fi. We've got a few different vaults going, and you can check that on the vaults page on our DAP. Great. I'll, cool. I'll definitely de- link all your info down below for people we'll to check that <laughs> yeah. out after. I also want to know what issues you currently see in the entire DeFi space and what problems right now? Um, how are you solving those problems with Wi-Fi? Yeah, I think the biggest issue is one that it's actually been started to be spoken about a little bit more, and that's the creation of real yield, mm. right? And real yield essentially means that rather than just minting and inflating tokens, uh, so releasing tokens through an inflationary process that just reduces the net price of your token, it's m- releasing tokens through a process that's sustainable and built into a wider system, right? I.e. there's some backing generation of income that's supporting the release of those tokens. Um, now, this, uh, I'm not going to call it real fire. That's totally wrong. Real fire is a totally different sector. Um, but this real yield within DeFi, I think, is what's going to really differentiate projects in the next bull run. So the DeFi projects in the next bull run. So the next product that we're building out for Wi-Fi is our auto harvester. And this is this is a really simple product. It's just an indexed fund for LP tokens. So in TradFi, you have indexed funds where users just deposit their money into a stock picker essentially just randomly pick stocks for you and it'll pick 150 stocks in a sector or across three or four sectors and will give you the average of those stocks so this auto harvester does the same thing for you but for lp farming across multiple tokens on card so you would have like a dex token auto harvester or you'd have a real fire auto harvester or you would have a gaming token auto harvester and it basically just purchases and automatically farms those tokens from those projects for you and the advantage is that this system will automatically seek out the best yield on your behalf, right? So you don't have to sit there managing your liquidity, swapping and changing, working out who's got the best farm, so on and so forth. That's all managed for you. But what this product does um, in particular, and it's sort of an extension to our bar, which we already have, which is our, you know, our first implementation of real yield within our system, which is the redistribution of the fees that are generated through trading on our decks and given back to our users or a percentage thereof. Um, Our auto harvester allows us to collect liquidity from our users and deploy that liquidity across other DEXs and then use that liquidity. So we'll be taking 15% of all the farm generated on the auto harvester to buy back Wi-Fi from the market. 
So we're essentially able to generate a real yield from other platforms across Cardano using user liquidity and deliver that real yield back to our token and use that real yield to rebuy our token from the market. So by expanding this process, whereby at the moment it's concentrated on our decks and redistributing the fees from our decks, but by implementing an auto harvester, so an indexed LP system that allows advanced users to just offlay a portion of their portfolio without having to think about it, or beginner users to onboard themselves and dabble by engaging with portions of multiple tokens without having to work too hard um, while they're still learning. We're able to amalgamate this liquidity, generate a large set of real yield and deliver that real yield back to our platform. And that's how we're trying to solve that problem for the next bull run. Great, great. On our show, we're really focused on environmental sustainability too. And it seems like your processes make things a lot more efficient. But I was wondering, are there ways that your team specifically is working on environmental sustainability and what are those practices that you're doing? I mean, there's always the there's always the advantage of working on the Cardano blockchain in that it's a significantly more environmental. For sure. Yeah. Right. So Bitcoin at the moment uses 3% of the world's energy. <laughs> Once we have the halving, they're going <laughs> to need to use even more energy, double the amount of energy just to mine one Bitcoin. True. Yeah. yeah. What is that? That's insanity. Anywho, so that's not a sustainable process. I remember when I started working in IKEA, IKEA came to us super proudly mm -hmm. and were like, hey, we've just managed to um, take over. This was like 10 years ago. We've just managed to take over 1% of the world's timber supply even more 12 <laughs> years ago. Um, and they were super proud. And what they were super proud of was the fact that they were able to do it in a sustainable manner, right? Because they have all the tree farms and they've got tree farms throughout Scandinavia that they are essentially planting and perpetually got these cycles of forests that they're using to then build the furniture. We don't have any kind of system like that within Bitcoin. And that's something that seriously needs to be worked out as a first point. But within Cardano, we don't have that issue. Um, on a personal level, uh, you know, we're Australian, much like yourself in America, we're all pretty passionate about our environmental issues. Melbourne's burning every three or four mm, weeks. Wildfires. <laughs> yep. We've got a lot of wildfires, right? And we're definitely feeling the effects of global warming. So on a personal level, yes, I implement a lot of things uh, from, you know, solar panels on my property. Well, not this one, but the one in Italy. And, um, you know, working to minimize the way in which I expend my energy. The problem that I always have uh, is that it, I feel like it's always negated by the fact that I have to fly for work. So <laughs> that sucks um, because flying is such a burden on the environment. It is. Um, the thing that I the thing that I should work on more, and this is an Australia wide problem. In Italy, they're really passionate about recycling, and it's super important. Australia sucks at recycling, hmm. so we export all our recycling to China. And ever since our trade war in China, they've refused mm -hmm. to take our recycling. And now we don't have recycling centers in Australia, and China's not taking it, so we just literally don't have recycling. So you it's really just don't even have the bins. You just everything goes to the trash don't even, now. Do doesn't even exist. There's like three centers in Australia that can process like 4% oh. of our waste. Like it's literally nothing. <laughs> this well, is, the entire industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an absolute mess. It's an absolute mess. Um, so what I would say, look, from, from a business perspective, mm -hmm. the best that we can really do is minimize the servers that we run, right? The Cardano blockchain does a lot of that work for us. The, oh. from the server perspective, we're always working to minimize the servers that we run because it works in tandem from an efficiency perspective and that we spend less money on a monthly basis to run those servers if we're using less energy, right? So energy minimization is always a focus within our business because that is seriously probably 30% of our fixed cost. Mm -hmm. um, on a personal level, I'm also passionate about environmental things yeah. and, the envi and you know, environmental, um, environmental change. Um, but I wish Australia recycled. <laughs> That's my main takeaway from that. Wonder what we can use with the Cardano to somehow push Australia to recycle. <laughs> well, they've got this brilliant system in Italy. I just want to quickly share it because it really yeah, is Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear it. When you recycle your waste in Italy, and they've got like nine different bins, they're really big on their recycling there. But if you don't recycle your waste and the bin people start to realize that you're not putting your waste in the right baskets, mm -hmm. they inform the city council and the city council actually raises the property tax for the entire apartment building. Wow. Right. Huh. So every time you do it, the um, the 
city tax for that year goes up by 200 euros for the entire apartment building. So basically divided mm -hmm. by total tenants, everyone has to pay more. Yeah. So if you start putting in the wrong stuff in the wrong recycling, all your tenants will start to be like, wait, who the f is charging us so much money? <laughs> Let's work out who this bastard is. And they all start coming after the person that's putting in the wrong recycling, like, mate, you're making us pay a fortune, bloody do your recycling right. <laughs> And I think that's a really good system where you can actually, you know, use a negative incentive to get people to conduct a positive act. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a system that I'm a fan of and I love that they can actually recycle in Italy and I'm, I just can't do that here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the trade war. Sorry. A little Every personal day. aside. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love hearing, though, from people in other countries, just like, how are your systems working? What's wrong? Like, how do we fix these problems and learn from other countries? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Japan does it the best, honestly. Yeah, I just right. went to Japan with my family. Uh, we went on a trip in November, and I was amazed how clean it was, and just everyone knew where to put everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they do an incredible job. Um. So um, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm a little bit passionate about recycling. It's sort of the area that I'm most interested in in environmentalism, particularly the the bit that Japan sucks at is you know plastics. You know that entire um garbage patch in the northern Pacific, and mm -hmm. like I've never seen. I've never been to a 7-Eleven where you can buy like one sandwich and it's like plastic, undo the plastic, and then there's plastic, <laughs> and then you undo the plastic, and then there's a plastic container for the sandwich and it's still wrapped in another thing of plastic. And you're just like, <laughs> 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 like why is this like Jenga to remove my sandwich? <laughs> no, they don't have trash cans anywhere, so you have to walk around with all your plastic to throw away the plastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. Okay, I don't want to keep you for too much longer. I was also wondering, are there any collaborations that you're looking forward to right now that you're allowed to say on the show or what kinds of collaborations are you looking into? The ones that I'm really excited for, uh, I already mentioned it earlier, is Zengate Global. Um, mm -hmm. So they're launching on TM1 and then launching their liquidity through BiFi. Um, we work, work closely with quite a few projects. So I've been an advisor in the ecosystem for quite a few years now. As a result, I've built a personal relationship with a lot of projects. A few of those projects are launching through T-1 and then launching their liquidity on BiFi sort of through April, May, and June. Uh, but I can't announce them yet, but I'm really excited for them. Um, they're certainly larger projects. Uh, one in particular is a very large project that I'm very excited for. Um, from a liquidity perspective, so in the last month, we've launched Mayhem uh, token, which is, uh, I don't want to pretend to know what all these tokens do. We've got like 150 tokens on our decks. Um, <laughs> We've launched Mayhem, we've launched a liquidity pool for Raker, and we've also launched uh, um, DGAF, have also moved their major liquidity pool over to ourselves. Um, so, you know, we're always working with partners within the ecosystem to build our liquidity to make, you know, for more for more trade possibilities on our platform. Is um, it Mayhem, I mean, H-E-M? M-A-M-Y-M-H-M-Y-H-M. Okay, that's a different one. I thought you meant like the stable coin. But I was like, oh, I know that guy. He lives in New York and comes to a bunch of our meetups, but different token. Is, I that, is that Mayhem? That's May Mayhem, yeah, the, the stable yeah, coin. Yeah, Mayhem, is that, yeah. is that Matt? Yeah, that's Matt, that's Matt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt's a legend. I've done a, I've done quite a bit of work with Matt. Say hello to him for me next time. Okay, well, yeah, I'll probably be at the NFT yeah. NYC stuff. Um, do you want to add mm -hmm. anything else? Were you ever thinking of other blockchains when you first started off, or were you always like, well, for sure, we're going to start and launch on Cardano? Oh God, I hate saying this on the video. I was never like a Cardano hardcore, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm not a blockchain hardcore. Yeah. I'm not a maximalist by any sense. Um, I believe that all the blockchains work better when we work together because they've all got different strengths and weaknesses. What I really saw back when I was designing my project um, back in the early days, you know, three and a half, four years ago, was jumping into the Ethereum ecosystem in 2020, sort of mid-2020 into 2021, mm -hmm. was a super duper, uh, what's the word? Saturated market. Right? Yeah. Like there were so many people there. Uh, there was a new DEX coming up every three weeks. There was a new auto harvester coming up every two weeks. 30%, like 80% of them were rug pulls. Like it was a mess. <laughs> Um, and BNB chain wasn't offering you much better. I mean, the casino uh -huh. chain definitely wasn't better than Ethereum. So, and they were the two major options to launch on, right? So we realized that it might have been easy to make quick money on those chains, but in terms of actual differentiation of product and capacity to make a difference with the product that we're building, mm -hmm. um, we thought that Cardano really is what stood out in terms of giving us that opportunity to show what we're trying to make. And, 
you know, we've been in the ecosystem for so long now. We were one of the first Xs to ever announce. I mean, if you go back to the first ever ecosystem map produced, um, we're on it. You know, we're one of the 11 projects on the first ever ecosystem map that was made. Um, and of those 11 projects, I think only four of them are left. Wow. So it's it's been a real war of attrition, I'll tell you what. Um, but we're here and we're going to continue innovating on Cardano. and you know, that's what makes me most excited is for Cardano. It's the fact that this blockchain allows us to build things really differently and actually like visualize these products in a, diff in a way that hasn't been visualized before. And in so doing, we create a much easier process to onboard users because the system's easier to use, mm -hmm. right? And the easier the system, the easier it is to get users. You know, it's not a hard equation. Yeah. <laughs> so Cardano gives us that power. So through working in Cardano, I've become more and more passionate as I've spent years in this space, learning more about how this technology works and building on it. So whilst I'm not a maximalist, now I would say I'm definitely a Cardano first. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You really thought about the longevity of your project too. And if you really wanted a strong infrastructure, if you really wanted a strong community, I think Cardano is the way to go mm -hmm. for that. Definitely. And actually to, to follow on on that, um, we've got the slowest emissions rate of any DEX. Mm -hmm any blockchain mm -hmm. right because my entire we've got 52 years worth of emissions yeah right so basically our farming will never end at least i'll be dead before it ends <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean the and the reason exactly to what you said the reason we did that is because i don't see i see the approach that a lot of liquidity providers are taking at the moment a very short-sighted approach they're mm -hmm. looking at it in terms of how can i get liquidity over the next two years yeah right finish my farm in four years and then i mean i guess that's the end of the project because the only reason people take on a permanent risk unless you're uniswap which most <laughs> people aren't um the only reason people take on impermanence risk is for farm so we decided to sort of subvert that and go well let's take a longevous approach you know let's look at this from what's our farm going to look like in 20 years time right and will we still be able to maintain a system then because we don't see the point of just building out a system that's going to work over the next four years we're not just here for the next bull run to make money and leave i'm here for a career yeah you know, i've turned this into my career i want to work here as my career i'd like to retire still working in the crypto space i don't want to turn around make money and run basically <laughs> that's good that's good so i want to know i think after watching this probably a lot of people want to get involved so how can people support the project? How can they learn more? How can they get involved? What are the best ways? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, jump into our Discord, Telegram. Okay. Uh, of course, follow us on Twitter, X, whatever it is now. <laughs> um, that bad boy, say hello to Elon Musk for me on the way. And, you know, ask any questions you have. We're around to answer them. Um, we've got, you know, a very dedicated support staff. I swing into all the socials at least once a day as well. So... You know, ask any questions that you guys have and definitely come and check out our site. It's app.bifi.io. I mean, we've been live now for almost a year. God, time moves fast. <laughs> it does, it does. So I'll, I'll link all your info down below if people want to check that out. And yeah, feel free to reach out to Steve on all those different platforms. I'm super appreciative, Steve, that you went on our show and that you stayed here till like 3 a.m. your time. Um, I know it's getting super late for you, so I should probably let you sleep by now. But yeah, everybody check them out on Telegram, on Discord, on X, Twitter, all the things. And yeah, he'll reach out if you want to work together, if you have any ideas to share. But that's it for us today. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts. Feel free to share this with your friends if you enjoyed this content. And we'll see you next time, everyone. Bye.